All right, everybody, welcome in. We're sitting in with Oxford head baseball coach, Coach Travis Jansen's first year coach here at Oxford High School. <clears throat> uh, coach, appreciate you coming yes, on sir. with us. Yes, sir, thank you. Thank you so much. We're here in Coach's uh, office here. Got nice and quiet in here, but uh, Coach, we just want to sit in with you and uh, get a little bit of your background. I know you came 25 years, I believe, at the collegiate level coaching baseball. I'm sure you've learned a lot, forgot more baseball than a lot of people knows, but just take us back to the early years when you got into baseball and when you got into coaching. Well, when you say 25 years, it just, it feels like, um, you know, I guess it goes fast and in, in that uh, deal of if you're doing something you really enjoy doing, boy, time goes fast. So it doesn't seem like I've been doing it 25 years, but uh, as, as you, the question was early years. I grew up in Kansas, Manhattan, Kansas. Um, that town is most famous for Kansas State. That's where Kansas State was located. And my dad was in a, a sports journalist, so I got to see a lot of Kansas State athletics and was um, got a lot of got to see a lot of really cool things as a young kid seeing Kansas State, and that propelled me into a career in baseball and and uh, played all the sports growing up. But baseball was my favorite, and um, from there, uh, you know, a high school player and and uh, went on to. To play Division One baseball, and then and then uh, I had an injury late in my college career, and that shot a pro career out of the sky pretty quick, and that launched me into college coaching. And um, you know, I had a lot of different stops, learned a lot of different things from different places, but um, college coaching has taken me to you know I think six or seven different states, including Hawaii, and and. Um, from everywhere from Kansas to Hawaii, I've kind of been. So it's been a neat career for sure and, and very happy I'm here at Oxford High School. I don't know if you could find two more opposite ends of the spectrum than Kansas and Hawaii. It's two different parts of the, the country for sure. And uh, Louisiana was in the middle of it and Louisiana was just as unique as Hawaii in its own way. So yeah. I, baseball has given me the opportunity to see a lot of different uh, parts of the country. Did you get to watch Michael Bishop? Uh, Kansas State. You bet. Yeah. So Michael Bishop. So my dad was um, uh, he was the beat writer, the sports journalist for Kansas State. And um, so I saw all things Kansas State That's from awesome. from, you know, the early 80s until, you know, till early 2000s. So Michael Bishop, for those of you who don't know, he was the runner up in the Heisman Trophy one year Very and just an electric quarterback. And uh, anyway, so yeah. got to see him. I had to ask that before I move forward. Uh, yeah, coach. So what was it about the game of baseball that stuck out to you above all other sports? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you tend to gravitate to the sport that you're probably best in, maybe. Um, I could play basketball, but I knew I didn't have the quickest feet. And football, I played it because my friends did. And I probably preferred the front yard version of football more than the Friday night football. <laughs> and, and so, you know, in, in, in baseball, uh, from a pretty early age on, I was on, on some really good teams. and surrounded by a lot of good players and and um that was probably the sport i was best at and so probably gravitated that way no doubt um you know baseball's changed over the years um definitely the way people approach the game you know more home run hitters everybody's wanting to throw gas so to speak now what do you like about some of the new age baseball techniques and people's coaching and playing and and some of the old school techniques mm. well you know the um and I think baseball is a game that moves in cycles. And I think I think gradually, you know, some of the the um, swinging for the fences. I th I think it's kind of coming back toward the middle where that's not as emphasized as much. I think, but when you start swinging for the fences, strikeouts go up. When strikeouts go up, the game becomes less boring, uh, or becomes more boring, and and it's just it's not a game where uh, people want to see action, and so. You know, I, I wish and I'm, and I'm hoping that uh, trends will continue to move toward more of a putting the ball in play and more of a contact and line drive and doubles. And I think a lot of those front office people that thought hitting homers was the only way to win, I think some of that thinking is going back more toward the medium. Um, but I, I do like an aggressive brand of baseball and I like a lot of action and I like energy and I like athletic guys on the field that can move and and um, just the sitting back and swinging for the fences. I don't think um, that's not my deal, right? Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, so those are a couple of my thoughts. Was there a point in your playing career where you thought I could teach this game? I think I could be a good coach myself. Well, so so very quickly. So my senior year of college. So my junior year, uh, I was an All-American. I was an All-American as a junior. Probably wasn't fast enough get, to get drafted my junior year. 
and probably would have gotten drafted my senior year if I would have done had two years with the bat like I did my junior year and so I thought that was the path I was on and then my senior year the way things work um, I got hurt I broke my leg sliding into second base once that happened I, I went on this mindset of like you know what else is there besides baseball I don't think I was depressed or I don't think I was but I was on this mindset of like I've poured so much into baseball and so I started thinking, you know, what else could I do? And then at some point, I think it was my dad, but a dad and a couple other mentors grabbed me and said, if baseball is what you're passionate about, why are you fighting this thing? And so from there, I, I got into college coaching at age, you know, right out of college at 23. And um, as, yeah, so um, I played for a gentleman named uh, Elliot Avent. Elliot Avent was the head coach at New Mexico State. So as my senior year ended, I approached him and I said, hey, I'd love to be a student assistant. He said, I'd love to have you, but I'm getting ready to take the North Carolina State job. So he went to North Carolina State and he's still there. Incredible career. So, so once that happened, then I realized, oh, and then I was lucky enough to get on at Kansas State. A guy named Mike Clark at Kansas State, my hometown university, he brought me on as a student assistant. And that's how it took off. What did you learn in those early years? Oh, oh boy. From a different perspective, not playing now, just watching the game and being able to teach. It's funny you mentioned, um, you know, just yesterday um, we had uh, one of my mentors was in town. He surprised me. He came in and he came in to see us play and, and uh, got to hang out and see a, a guy that really helped mold me. But uh, we were at Arkansas together. Um, anyway, so what did I learn early on? I just... Uh, probably a lot of wrong ways to do it, you know, and a lot of things, you know, I think as a young, eager, competitive, aggressive coach, you really want to get your fingerprints on things and you really want to make a difference. And you sure, certainly your intentions are good. I was probably maybe a little bit, um, you know, you, you want to make a difference, you know, you get into this thing and you have all this passion. And, and um, so, you know, maybe, you know, maybe just the experience teaches when you should interject and when you should help and um, I'm a lot more of a, a coach now that I try to help guys find their own solutions instead of maybe being so quick to uh, give the right answer if that makes sense. That's right. Kind of let them help themselves. That's right. That's right. Um, changing gears uh, now you're we're obviously sitting here at Oxford High School you come over moved over to Oxford High School what was it about Oxford that, that stuck out to you? Uh, something that probably jumped off the page that was like, man, I'd like to be a part of that. Very honestly, the people, you know, and if, if, if we're going to name names, uh, I had, you know, my background included Joel Van Meter, the basketball coach. And so when I started entertaining this Oxford idea, I got on the phone with, with Coach Van Meter and he said, he, you know, and he did a great job. He said, you know, he just explained how the administration worked and how Coach Davidson led from an athletic director standpoint. And some of the things that Coach Van Meter taught me about this place, um, it made me excited. Absolutely. And so then when the interview process um, happened, you know, I came down with an open mind and really, very honestly, had never entertained high school, ever. Have never entertained the high school level. And, and then it came down to Oxford and the facilities weren't everything, but saw the facilities. Obviously that shows they are committed to athletics. Uh, met Coach Davidson and just thought, man, what a great guy to work for. Met Mr. Harmon, uh, his passion for leadership. I've been in a few meetings with him and he's a neat man to work for. And just so the pieces started falling into place. And uh, very honestly, I started asking myself, you know, with my 12 year old coming up, do I want to see a lot of his games? And, you know, having the, the thought of being able to be around my 12 year old because he likes to play. and. And so just those, all those factors started lining up and, it, and it's been an incredible blessing so far. What was your first message to the team when you arrived here, uh, when you got the guys together? Hmm, I wish you'd ask RJ Brooks and Carter and Tide and those guys. I wonder what they would remember. But um, I think the message was, I'm coming in with a super humble attitude. I feel so grateful and blessed to be here. Um, I want your input. This is a players led program. I know there's great tradition here in the past, um, and I love that about that. That's something that, that's something I wanted to be a part of. Uh, I wanted to give them a message that I was here to encourage, to help, to lead, to provide a good environment for them. And but I also wanted their input on things that they really enjoyed about the program and things that maybe needed tweaked. And so, 
some combination of those thoughts is what the first message was. That's awesome, man. Coach, since you've got your hands on these athletes here at Oxford and you've got to train with them, then you've got to act actually out on the diamond and playing with them, what have you learned about an Oxford kid? Just overall, how these guys work and how they're bought into the program and they love wearing that big O on their, their hat and out in public. It, it carries weight in this county. Yeah, I, I said something, I said this on a podcast or something recently, but it hit me in the Christmas parade when, you know, I was here for a couple months and we were going through fall workouts and very honestly, the team felt funny to me because part of the kids were playing football and I wasn't used to that, you know, just having part of the guys and some of them being removed and just a new experience for me. So I didn't really understand how it all fit together. And then when we, we, we took part in the Christmas parade and when we were on the Christmas parade and those streets were super packed and I was sitting in the background and I could hear, you know, the excitement on little kids as we were going through that Christmas parade, I thought that was a really neat experience. And that's the first time it hit me like, hey, this Oxford baseball deal, this is a pretty good thing. It's a pretty neat thing. So that was the first time it really, really hit me. And, and from there, um, seeing the kids' faces at games, I, I didn't quite anticipate that, just the excitement when you see young kids standing at the net staring at our guys. And, and our, our guys, and just a 10-second plug on them, I mean, they are great ambassadors for this school and this community. I'm so proud of how they carry themselves with integrity in class and, and um, they do a great job representing the school from my vantage point and I am proud of that. But we don't take wearing that O lightly at all. Absolutely. A couple more questions, we'll get you out of here. I know you got a class coming in just a few minutes. Coach, Coach that county championship game we watched, uh, thousands and thousands of people watched on TV24 and we shared your guys' pictures on average, Joe Sports Talk. That was an unbelievable game with a walk-off. Um, I believe Judd hit the ball and, and got the hit, the, the walk-off hit. But to me, that, that just solidified Oxford, man. It's like you guys went through the wars. You're the hunted. You know, everybody wants to beat Oxford. It's a big deal if somebody beats Oxford in any sport, especially baseball. And when you guys won that, it seemed like it was just this click. Like it's just something clicked with you guys. Like you were just not going to be denied there. Can you talk about that a little bit and how you guys kind of gritted that one out? It was an unbelievable baseball game. It was an unbelievable game. Probably top five or top eight games I've ever been involved with. But um, it was just a game that, first off, let's start with Alexandria. Because, I mean, when you, when you have a moment like that, you have to have a quality opponent that you're playing against. And as I've said before, we have, the mo we have so much respect for Alexandria and how they do things and the type of kids that are over there. And um, I've known Alexandria a long time, and I have a lot of respect for those kids. So start there. And so their pitcher, Patterson, what an incredible changeup that kid has. He has a bright future in this game. Um, so he kept us off balance, and it was just that deal where it felt like R.J. Brooks and then the collection of guys that we used on the mound, we were just matching him. And, and um, you know, it was, a, it was a game where we made a couple plays at home plate, threw some guys out, you know, that, so that builds excitement. And, and it was just one of those games that, you know, nobody was really going to hit. And then, and then finally, Judd Sire, our football player, you know, you know he, 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 he comes in and whacks the ball to left field. And he's a guy that we had to talk into playing in January because we were trying to get some bodies. So um, just, a, just a really cool atmosphere. And again, just the respect we have for Alexandria. Um, so much respect for them, and then to be involved in that game was a lot of fun. Absolutely. And Coach, before I let you get out of here, just kind of final thoughts on, on uh, your experience here so far at Oxford High School. No, I think I've said it. You know, just the, the people have been great. The players have been super welcoming. They're super coachable. It's fun to be around a talented group that wants to get better. Uh, they care about winning, and that starts with the senior class. Those seniors, it means something to win. And um, that's the type of group that I want to be around. And it filters down through. It's not just about the seniors. But the, the upperclassmen do a great job of leading. Um, and very honestly, the sophomores and the freshmen, they do a good job of following. Because you do have to, you, you know, everybody has a chance to lead in their own regard. But also, uh, it's a good thing to understand what it means to be a follower and do the right things um, the way the culture is supposed to go. So. Um, it's been a great experience so far. I tell you what, a high school season goes fast. Yeah, it does. Very fast. It goes fast. That's the part that's a little bit different for me. It feels like I, I can't believe we only have a couple weeks left that's right. uh, in the regular season. So 
keep playing well and build toward the playoffs and, and hopefully, you know, get, put ourselves in a position to make a run. You know, God willing, you, your state, the state tournament's here in this very city, so um, yep. it's always a positive thing. That's a neat thing. Coach, I thank you for sitting in with us. I really appreciate your time. Yes, sir, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yep. Oh, look at the lights.